وقال الرسول يا رب إن قوم اتخذوا هذا القرآن مهجورا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هدي له وشر أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا ما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين So after thanking and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the best of thanks and the praises he deserves testifying that there is none worthy of being worshipped in truth besides him alone without any partners, further testifying that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger, we beseech him tabaraka wa ta'ala to send his peace and blessings upon him, his family, all of his companions, and whomsoever follows his direction, meaning his sunnah, until the establishment of the last hour. We continue after a long break. Walillahi alham for Allah's all of the praises and that break was to benefit from the tremendous days of Dhul Hijjah, the first 10 days, the day of Eid, Yawmul Nahar, or Yawmul Hajj al Akbar, and also Ayamu Tashurik. During these days, we shelved our normal lesson from the book Al-Muntaqa. The book Al-Muntaqa from Abu al-Barakat, Ibn Abd salam Ibn Taymiyyah, and Hurani. And again, we mentioned that he is the grandfather of the great and knowledgeable scholar, which we know, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. So we continue after that break and we were favored by Allah to complete four halaqat. And these four halaqat that we completed, the narrations that we put forth and the explanations from our father and Shaykh Sheikh Saul al-Fawzan were extremely important and they were topics that are pertinent for our everyday Issues, family issues, issues of divorce, issues of breastfeeding, issues of spending on the home and on the wife and the likes. Today we move on to another extremely important topic. And we're still in Kitab and nafaqat the book of spending. We're still dealing with that Kitab and inshallah with Allah's tawfiq we should complete this book today and again when we say kitab then it refers to a subcategory in the general book al muntaqa so the lesson that we continue with was the lesson of our father and shaykh shaykh sali al fawzan which was on yawm sabt saturday the 30th of dhul qa'da in the year 1000 442 Hijriya, which coincided with Saturday, the 10th of July 2021, Miladi. So the Sheikh and Qari, the one who reads upon the Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im, after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and beseeching him to send his peace and blessings upon his messenger, his family, and all of his companions, he began reading 
باب من أحق بكفالة الطفل The chapter that is found in this book, the book of spending, which is entitled, Who has the right to custody of the child? Who has the right to custody of the child? And obviously that is after divorce. And again, this is something that is extremely pertinent as we mentioned before. So we request the brothers and sisters that are here to pay extremely close attention and the brothers and sisters that have joined us on Facebook Live and that will see the recording later on. These are extremely important and pertinent topics. So he read the first hadith in this bab, in this chapter, and that is the hadith of Al-Bura ibn Azib radiallahu ta'ala an, anna ibn Hamza ikhtasama fiha aliyun wa zaydun wa ja'far فقال علي أن أحق بها وهي ابنة عمي وقال جعفر ابنة عمي وخالتها تحتي وقال زيد ابنة أخي فقضى بها النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لخالتها وقال الخالة بمنزلة الأم متفق عليه. So the hadith as we mentioned is narrated by the noble companion Al-Bara ibn Azib who stated that Ali, Zaid and Ja'far they had an argument concerning the daughter of Hamza as we know Hamza he was assassinated in the battle of in the battle of Uhud so Ali said I have more right to her as she is the daughter of my uncle Jafar said she is my uncle's daughter and her aunt is my wife Zaid radiallahu ta'ala he said she is my brother's daughter so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam judged that she should be given to her aunt Khalah meaning the aunt that is from the mother's side the aunt from the mother's side the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said and the aunt is like the mother the aunt is like the mother and this hadith is agreed upon by the two illustrious Imams Imam Al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim وَرَوَاهُ أَحْمَدْ أَيْدًا مِنْ حَدِيثْ عَلِي وَفِيهِ الْجَارِيَةُ عِنَّ خَالَتِهَا فَإِنَّ الْخَالَ وَالِدَهُ and Imam Ahmad also transmitted this hadith of Ali. And it states, the little girl must be with her maternal aunt. For the maternal aunt is the same as the mother. The maternal aunt is the same as the mother. Allahu Akbar. And this is me adding a point of benefits. For Allah's all of the praises. This is a clarification that Islam is indeed the truth. And as my children are present here, I am sure if it is that they contemplate that next to their mother, next to their mother, Alhamdulillah, is their khala, is their aunt which is their mother's sister who alhamdulillah is a muslimah and who shows great care concern and love for them just like their mother and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward their mother and also their khala their aunts i mean so this is something that we can sentiment with that the aunts the mother's sister is similar to the mother in terms of having that love and affection and care for her sister's children. In moving on, our father and Sheikh Sheikh Saul al Fawzan stated after praising and thanking Allah and beseeching him to send his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, and all of his companions, the one 
who has the right to custody of the child is the mother firstly. The one who has the right to custody of the child is who? Is who? The mother firstly. Then the aunt. Which aunt? Khala. And who is the Khala? The aunt from which side? The aunt from the mother's side, meaning the mother's sister. So the Shaykh Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he said, the mother's sister takes the place of the mother. Custody, as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated here. Then the Qarian Shaykh, Shaykh Nasir Abdul Mun'im Hafizahullah Ta'ala, went on to read the next hadith. An Abdullah ibn Amru radiallahu anhuma. أن امرأة قالت يا رسول الله إن بني هذا كان بطني له وعاء وثدي له سقاء وحجر له حواء وزعم أبوه أنه ينتزعه مني فقال لها رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنت أحق بها ما لم تنكحي رواه Ahmad wa Abu Dawuda walakin fi lafzihi wa inna abahu talaqani wa za'ama annahu yantazi'uhu minni and the authority of the companion Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhuma that a woman said O messenger of Allah the son of mine my womb was a receptacle for him and my breasts were a source of suckling for him and my lap was a place of resting for him to curl up yet his father wants to take him away from me yet his father wants to take him away from me the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied to her you have more rights to him as long as you do not marry you have more right to the child as long as you do not remarry, and this hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad, Abu Dawood. However, in the wording of Abu Dawood, it states, and indeed, his father divorced me, yet he wants to take him away from me. Our father, Sheikh Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he stated here, with regards to this hadith, that the rights to the custody of the child goes to who? Goes to? the mother the right to custody of the child goes to the mother and help us out with Allah Taala. may Allah preserve our families and our brothers and sisters from separation and breaking up of the homes however however these affairs directs us to ma'roof righteousness that is found in the religion of al-islam that even if there is a separation then these are the legislations which should be followed. Then Sheikh Nasir Hafidahullah Ta'ala went on to read the next hadith in this bab, in this chapter. And that is the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam khayyara ghulaman bayna abihi wa ummi rawahu ahmad wa ibn maja wa tirmidhi wa sahaha. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, said that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a boy the choice between his father and his mother. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave a boy the choice, yani a child the choice between his mother and his father. And this hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad ibn Majah at Tirmidhi who stated it to be authentic. Of a riwaya, an amra'ata ja'at, faqalat ya Rasulullah, inna zawji yuridu an yadhaba bi'ibni, wa qad saqani min birri abi inaba, wa qad naf'ani, faqala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, istahima alay, faqala zawjuha, man yuhaqquni fi waladi, فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ هَذَا أَبُوكُ وَهَذِهِ أُمُّكُ فَخُذْ بِيَدِي أَيْهِمَا شِئْتْ 
فأقذ بيد أمه فانطلقت به رواه أبو داود وكذلك النساء ولم يذكر فقال استهم علي ولأحمد معناه لكنه قال فيه جاءت امرأة قد طلقها زوجها ولم يذكر قد سقاني ونفعني and in another narration and this is the narration of Abi Huraira that a woman came to the messenger of Allah yani in another wording that a woman came to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said my husband wishes to take my son away and this son of mine he fetches water from the well of Abi Inaba and he has been good and of benefit to me who is saying this? the mother is saying this to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam responded cast lots for him her husband said who is disputing with me about my son the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said this is your father and this is your mother so take whichever of them you wish by the hand so the child ended up taking the mother's hand and she ended up leaving with him and this narration is collected by Abu Dawood and Nasai however in the riwayah of an Nasai it did not mention the words and he has been of benefit to me and he has been of benefit to me and in another narration which is collected by Imam Ahmad with the same meaning however in his wording he mentioned the statements a woman came whose husband divorced her and he did not mention in his wording and he draws water from me meaning from the well of Abi Inaba and he has been of benefit to me so in the wording of Imam Ahmad these sentences are omitted Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan Hafidahullah Ta'ala may Allah preserve him commented here he said this hadith is similar to what came before this narration is similar to what came before and that is if a man divorces his wife and she has a child for him then indeed the right to raising or custody of that child goes to the mother goes to the mother and that is because she knows better as it relates to the child's rectification and also she knows better as it relates to the child's needs and she generally knows more about that child than the father so the custody or raising goes to the mother goes to the mother then Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im repeated the part of the hadith which states qala zawjuha man yuhaqquni fi waladi faqala an nabiyyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hadha abuk وَهَذْهِ أُمُّكْ فَخُذْ بِيَدِ أَيْهِ مَا شِتْ فَأَخَذَ بِيَدِ أُمِّهِ فَانْتَلَقَتْ بِهِ Her husband stated the part of the hadith which Sheikh Nasir re-read. Her husband said, Who was disputing with me about my son? The Prophet ﷺ responded, This is your father and this is your mother, so take whichever of them you wish by the hand. So the child ended up choosing who? taking the hand of the mother and the mother left with him. Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, he stated, if it is the affair becomes a matter of severity. In other words, if there occurs a disagreement between the parents, then they look towards who the child has a desire to be with. They look towards who the child has a desire to be with. Or the child is asked who he or she prefers between the mother and the father. Then custody will be granted to the one whom the child outwardly shows a greater desire or inclination to be with. So the Prophet ﷺ here gave the choice to the child with regards to his or her nurturing once there occurred 
a dispute between the parents. Once there occurred what? A what? A dispute between the parents. As he, alayhi salatu wasalam, said to the child, Ya gulam, hadha abuk, wa hadhi ummuk, khudh biyadi man targabu minhuma. Fa'akadha biyadi ummihi, wa hiya dhahabat bihi. O young child, this is your mother, and this is your father. Take whose hand you want to be with. So the child ended up holding on to the hand of the mother, and the mother left with him. Then Shaykh Nasir Abdul Muni'im Hafidahullah Ta'ala read the next hadith in this tremendous chapter. And that is the hadith of Al Hamid ibn Salama Al Ansari. An Jaddihi. Anna Jaddahu Aslama wa Abat Imra'atahu an Tuslima. Fajaa bi ibn Lahu Sagirun Lam Yablug. Kala fa ajlasa an Nabiu Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al Ab Hahuna. والأم ها هنا ثم خيره وقال الأم هديه فذهب إلى أبيه رواه أحمد والنسائي. It was narrated from Abdul Hamid ibn Salama al Ansari from his grandfather that he became a Muslim but his wife refused to become a Muslim. So he came with his young son. And this child had not yet reached the age of puberty. The Prophet ﷺ seated the father on one side and seated the mother on the other side. And he gave the young child the choice. He then supplicated, O oh Allah, guide him. And the child went to his father, collected by Imam Ahmad and An Nasai. And in another narration, on the authority of Abdul Hamid ibn Ja'far who said my father informed me that my grandfather Rafi' ibn Sinan embraced Islam and his wife refused to embrace Islam so she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and said my daughter she is weaned or about to wean Rafi' said my daughter the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him be seated on one side and he said to her you sit on this side he then seated the girl between the both of them and said to them call her call the young child who was a girl the girl then inclined to the mother the girl then inclined to who the mother pay attention in tabihu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then did what O oh Allah, guide her. O oh Allah, guide her. Then the daughter, the child, inclined towards the father who ended up taking her and going with her. And this hadith is collected by Abu Dawood and Imam Ahmad. Abu Dawood and Imam Ahmad. The Shaykh Hafidahullah Ta'ala stated, there occurred here a dispute between the parents of this child. And this dispute occurred or happened after the father divorced his wife. So the child was given the choice to choose between the mother and the father. The Prophet ﷺ gave the choice here to the child who was what? Who was a girl. So she took hold of the father's hand. Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im Hafidahullah Ta'ala repeated the part of the hadith which states فَمَالَتْ أَصَّبِيَّ إِلَىٰ أُمِّهَا فَقَالَ أَنَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ أَلُهْ مَهْدِهَا فَمَالَتْ أَصَّبِيَّ إِلَىٰ أَبِيهَا فَأَخَذَهَا رَوَاهُ أَحْمَدْ وَأَبُ دَوُود So Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im Hafidahullah Ta'ala he repeated the part of the hadith which states that the child went towards the mother. When it is that the Prophet ﷺ told them to call the child, the child did what? Went towards the mother. Then the Prophet ﷺ did what? He supplicated, Allah Mahdiha, O Allah guide her. 
after the supplication, the child then went to the father. The child then went towards the father. Sheikh Fawzan Hafidahullah Ta'ala stated, the girl's father was a Muslim. And the mother was what? Was a kafira. She was a non-Muslim. But the child did what? The child proceeded to the mother. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then did what? He then supplicated, Allah Mahdiha, O Allah, guide her. Meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam supplicated that she will be guided or directed by Allah to the right choice. Then she ended up going with her father. So the father took her and then left. Sheikh Nasir, Hafidahullah Ta'ala read, وَعَبْدُ الْحَمِيدْ هَذَا هُوَ عَبْدُ الْحَمِيدْ إِبْنُ جَعْفَرْ إِبْنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ إِبْنْ رَافِعْ إِبْنْ سِنَانٍ الْأَنْصَارِ The Abdul Hamid referred to here is Abdul Hamid, the son of Ja'far, the son of Abdullah, the son of Rafi' Ibn Sinan al-Ansari. The Shaykh, Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, Shaykh Fawzan responded by saying, Radiallahu an, Radiallahu an, may Allah be pleased with him, which meant he was a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im Hafidahullah Ta'ala supplicated that Allah grants the Sheikh success. Then he proceeded by saying, as it relates to the nurturing or raising of the child, there is a position with the scholars of jurisprudence which states, وَلَا يُقَرُّ بِيَدِ مَا لَا يُسْلِحُهُ وَلَا يَسُونُ It is not endorsed or accepted one in whose hand there is no rectification and preservation. Then he said, إِذَا كَانَتْ الْأُمْ كَافِرَ فَهَلْ يُخَيَّرْ أَيْضًا الْإِبْنْ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ الْأَبْ According to this principle by the Fuqaha, Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im is asking who? Sheikh Saul Al-Fawzan. According to this principle, if the mother is a disbeliever, is the child still given the option to choose between the father and the mother? If the mother is a disbeliever, is it that the child is given the option to choose? And he mentioned the principle. وَلَا يُقَرُّ بِيَدِ مَا لَا يُسْلِحُهُ وَلَا يَسُونُ It is not endorsed or accepted. One in whose hand there is no rectification or preservation. So should the child be given the choice if it is that the mother is a disbeliever? Our father and Shaykh Hafidahullah Ta'ala responded, a disbeliever is not suitable to be given the responsibility of raising and nurturing the child. A disbeliever is not suitable to be given the responsibility of raising and nurturing the child. Then Shaykh Nasir Abdul Mun'im went on reading the title to the next chapter. Bab Nafaqat al-Raqiq the chapter entitled Spending Upon the Slaves and Being Kind Towards Them. Then he read the first hadith in this chapter. And that is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr. Radiallahu ta'ala an. One minute. Now, and that is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhuma, who said to his caretaker, "Have you supplied the provision?" to the slaves. So the caretaker said no. Then he said, go and give provision to them. Because the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the sin is enough for a man that he withholds the substance from the one who he is in charge of. And this hadith is collected by Imam Muslim. 
The hadith is collected by Imam Muslim. Sheikh Fawzan Hafizahullah Ta'ala stated, in this narration, it establishes that the one who takes responsibility for the child must spend on the child. The amount equivalent or required to suffice the child's needs. Then Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im went on to read the next hadith in this chapter. And that is the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, where it is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Lil mamluk tu'amuhu wa kiswatuhu wa la yukallafu min al-amal ma la yutik. The slave has his food and clothing and do not burden his slave with work which he is incapable of doing. Rawahu Ahmad wa Muslim. And this hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad and also Imam Muslim. Sheikh Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala stated the rights of Ar-Raqiq, meaning Al-Mamluk, the one who is a slave or kept for doing work and chores, is feeding and clothing him. The one who is a slave or kept for doing work and chores, the rights that he has is feeding and clothing him. And he should not be given the burden of doing chores, things which he is incapable of doing or which is difficult upon him. Then Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, went on to read the next hadith in this chapter. And that is the hadith of Abi Dharr. That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hum ikhwanukum wa khawalukum ja'alahumullah tahta aydikum fuman kana akhuhu tahta yaday fal yut'imhu mimma ya'kul wa yalbishu mimma yalbas wa la tukallafuhum ma yaglibuhum fin kallaftumuhum fa'ayinuhum alay mutafakun alay Abu Dhar radiallahu ta'ala an in this narration stated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said your slaves are your brothers. Your slaves are your brothers. Allah has placed them under your authority. He who has his brother under him under his care should feed him from whatever he eats and should clothe him from whatever he wears. And do not burden them, do not assign burdensome task upon them, that which is beyond their capability. And if you burden them, then help them. If you give them tasks, then help them. And this hadith is collected by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Our father and Shaykh Sikh Salih al-Fawzan stated, this narration directs us towards being kind to the slaves or those under our authority. It also clarifies the legislative rights, which is food, clothing, and not giving burdens, giving that person the burden or responsibility of doing things which is unsuitable or difficult upon them. This must be fulfilled by those that are in authority over them. Those who are the caretakers of these slaves. Then Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im went on reading the next hadith in this chapter, and that is the hadith of Abi Huraira. That the Prophet وسلم, said, When your servant brings your food to you, if you do not ask him to join you, then at least ask him to take one or two handfuls. For he has suffered from its heat while cooking it and has taken pains in preparing it nicely. And this hadith is collected by the group of Imams, yani the Imams of Hadith. Our father and Sheikh Sheikh Saul al Fawzan stated in this hadith is with regards to the servant who brings the food that they have a right in Islam to that which they prepared. Allahu Akbar. Meaning they are fed from that food which they cooked because this removes the desires or need 
they developed while preparing that food. How just is Islam? Allahu Akbar. Then Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mu'im went on to the next hadith in this chapter. And that is the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala an, who said that which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mostly enjoined when it is death was approaching him. As-salah wa ma malakat aymanukum rawahu Ahmad wa Abu Dawood wa Ibn Majah. The prayer and those whom your right hand possess. And this hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad, Abu Dawood, and Ibn Majah. Sheikh Salih al Fawzan, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, stated this was from the last wasiyah, the last advice of the Prophet وسلم, at the time of his death. And the advice comprises two commands, two affairs. The first affair is concerning as salah, the prayer. And in this command or advice of the Prophet وسلم, is with regards to fulfilling the right of Allah, as salah. The second advice here is concerning those whom your right hand possess, meaning the slaves. So they are confined to serving those who rule over them. Therefore, Islam makes it mandatory upon those who rule over the slaves to do what? To be righteous and kind towards them. Then Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im went on reading the title to the next chapter, Bab Nafaqatil Baha'im, the chapter which discusses spending on the cattle, or in other words, the animals, as we're going to see these narrations point towards animals. Sheikh Saul al Fawzan stated, spending or maintaining upon the cattle or animals is upon the owner of these animals. Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mun'im went on to read the first hadith in this chapter, this important chapter, on the authority of Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Udhibat imra'a fi hirra sajanatha hatta matat fadakhalat fiha annar la hiya ata'amatha wa saqatha idh habasatha wa la hiya tarakatha ta'kulu min khashash al-ard a woman was punished because she kept a cat tied until it died. And as a punishment of this offense, she was thrown into the fire of hell. She did not provide it with food nor drink. And she did not free the cat so that the cat may roam about in the earth to seek its sustenance. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an transmitted the same narration. Sheikh Fawzan hafidahullah ta'ala commented here. He said, this was in regards to a woman who was punished for a cat she possessed. She confined this cat and did not feed or provided what would suffice it. Neither did she leave the cat to seek its own provisions, meaning to roam about the earth and eat from what the earth has for the cat from food and provisions and sustenance. So for this reason, she was punished. Then Sheikh Nasir Abdul Mu'nim went on to the next narration. And that is the narration of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an, who said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, a person suffered from thirst while on a journey. And then he found a well. So he climbed down into it and drank water. Then when he came out, he saw a dog panging because the dog was thirsty and eating the moistened earth. So the man said, this dog has suffered from thirst as I suffered from thirst. So he climbed down into the well 
filled his shoe with water, then caught it in his mouth until he climbed up and gave the dog to drink. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala became pleased with him for this act and pardoned him. So the companions around the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they said, O Messenger of Allah, is there for us a reward even for serving such animals? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, yes. There is a reward for service to every living animal. And this hadith is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Sheikh Fawzan hafizahullah ta'ala stated, in this narration establishes kindness towards animals and fulfilling their needs so this man and in another narration which mentioned a woman who was involved in indecencies prostitution or fornication she fetched water from a well then when she got the water she saw this dog growling or panting out of thirst so what did she do she lowered her shoe which she was wearing into the well, filling it with water. Then she gave the dog to drink from it. So Allah wa ta'ala became well pleased with her and ended up forgiving her. So the Shaykh Salih al-Fawzan hafizahullah ta'ala stated, if this is the situation with animals, then what is the situation with the sons of Adam and those who are ruled over and that is being kind and fulfilling their needs. And Sheikh Nasir, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, repeated the part of the hadith which states, where the companions asked, O Messenger of Allah, is there a reward for us, even for serving such animals? He responded, yes. There was a reward for service to every kind of animal. And this hadith is agreed upon by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Our father and Sheikh Sheikh Saul al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he said, yes, upon us is being kind towards animals. And there is a reward for service to animals and other than them. Move on to the last narration in this chapter. And that is the hadith of Suraqa ibn Malik, who said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about a lost camel, that comes to my stall or pond that I have prepared for my own camels. Would I be rewarded if I gave it some water to drink? The Prophet ﷺ responded, Naam, yes. In every living being, there was a reward. And this hadith is collected by Imam Ahmad. Sheikh Saul al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah Ta'ala stated, This narration points to be righteous towards animals. Even those you do not possess or own. Even those you do not possess or own. So this individual acts concerning animals which came to his pond, which he prepared for his own animals to drink. So other animals which he does not own will come and drink from this pond. The Prophet wasallam then informed him that he has a reward for this. And told him, likewise, there was a reward for fulfilling the rights of every living being. And this is that which we wanted to present from these tremendous narrations, which directs us to pertinent and important affairs in our lives. May Allah wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq to understand these affairs and to make us from those that are consistent upon this great act of seeking beneficial knowledge. May Allah Azza wa Jal make us from those who implement that which we learn. And may Allah Azza wa Jal give us all a good ending. May Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala bless all of you and put a light on your path until our next sitting. Wa ilahuna barakallahu fikum wa subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk.